coming up on Ag Week TV. An ambitious new conservation program is raising questions among farmers. We'll talk about the potential impact of renewable diesel on the country. We'll meet a North Dakota farmer breeding show goats. And a Minnesota farmer turned small town grocer. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. The Biden administration has set ambitious environmental goals for America. The 30 by 30 program calls for covering 30% of American land with conservation measures by the year 2030. Some fear a government overreach, but popular federal conservation programs are largely voluntary and for set time periods. Nicola Pates has more in this week's Ag Week cover story. The first thing you need to do is, is to have something that, that has incentive for profitability on your ranch, you know. Farmer rancher Lewis Heaton and his family have a 10,000 acre operation of which half is cropped. The family grows corn, soybeans, and wheat, and they have more than 500 head in a cow-calf herd in central North Dakota. He got interested in no-till farming in the 90s, his first step into the conservation movement. Since then, he's added other measures, including a grazing system. There's a, quite a few things that we've learned over the years that really do help um, not only your soil health, but it is a, it's a big benefit for society in general, I would say. Plus, plus your own branch. Heaton is among those enrolled in the popular conservation stewardship program. While some farm groups and political pundits fear 30 by 30 might turn into some type of land grab by the federal government, Todd Hagel of the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service says it's actually a great opportunity for growers to improve their land. What are your resource concerns? We'll do an assessment on your property. And then what we do is we would then look at which program is most appropriate to address your concerns. When you can build your soil organic matter, whether it's in farmland or whether it's in rangeland, the, the benefits are the same. You know, you, you'll get increased production. Near Mackenzie, North Dakota, this is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. There are many challenges for producers right now, but there are also opportunities. Jeff Beach talked with Kent Beadle, the director of production brokerage at CHS, about market disruptors, specifically the impact of renewable diesel on the country. One of the big disruptors is the momentum toward uh, renewable fuels. Tell us what you see there. Well, obviously renewable diesel you know, has been a fairly big story here for the last eight, 10 months. It's been kind of pushed to the background since the uh, Ukraine invasion and also with all the inflationary forces that we've had in the economy, we don't hear so much about it. But we think that that momentum is still there. Right now, you know, we see projections saying that we need 40 million pounds of soybean oil by 2024. Current 22-23 projection for renewable diesel usage is 12 million pounds. So clearly there's a huge uh, ramp upwards that is going on in order to fulfill this demand that is clearly keeping the price of soybean oil elevated. Uh, it's keeping crush margins elevated, uh, which is providing the incentive to build more soybean crushing facilities to ultimately meet this demand. What about how that translates into the crop mix in the future? Well, ultimately, um, you know, you see a couple of broad trends. You see more soybean acres in order to meet this demand that are going to replace some of the corn acres that you're going to lose as you have less ethanol demand over the time frame that you're shifting toward a larger mix of electric vehicles. Um, we actually think that the soybean uh, crushing demand is going to accelerate quicker than we're going to lose ethanol demand. And therefore, um, you know, the fight for acres could be with us here for a number of years. Kent Beadle from CHS, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeff. The National Corn Growers Association applauds the recent Senate introduction of the Next Generation Fuels Act. The bill would establish a clean standard for gasoline and help lower greenhouse emissions, allowing automakers to significantly improve vehicle fuel efficiency. Corn growers, you know, we really see the Next Generation Fuels Act as a way for to update fuel and vehicle policy just to take greater advantages of the benefits that ethanol has to offer um, in terms of helping to clean up transportation, to lower prices, and to really give consumers more choices 
that are cleaner and affordable. With inflation on the rise, gas prices have continued to surge. NCGA has been reminding policymakers that ethanol is a price savvy alternative. Ethanol, you know, by itself priced, you know, as much as a dollar less per gallon than than unblended gasoline. The Next Generation Fuels Act has been a bipartisan effort. The Upper Midwest is a key player in the international soy scene. Delegates from Asia, Central America, and Sub-Saharan African countries gathered at the Northern Crops Institute to become more familiar with the region's soy industry. It's great to know that North Dakota Soybean Council really works with WISH and works with NCI here and really saying, you know, how does their soybean work around the world? So a huge part. They play a huge part. The delegates learned about new ideas for soy-based foods and snacks, as well as soy as a supplement for fortifying foods and animal nutrition. We're getting such a great group of people here that need to feed their populations, and uh, we're hoping that they really see that soy protein is the way to do that. Those who attended toured both Minnesota and the Dakotas while learning about the region's soy industry. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take you to Vergas, Minnesota, where a farm family has opened a grocery store. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the Summers VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a Super Coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new Summers Super Coulter Samurai. Go to SummersMFG.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. The boots are polished, and the bows are rosined. Voices are warmed, and the hats are donned. The stage is ready. <laughs> so are we. We do this every night, just for you. The Medora Musical. Explore it. Adore it, Medora. All right, here's the free gift I got for opening up a checking account. Let's see what I got. Okay guys, so I got this portable DVD player. Yeah, I'm not sure why my bag would give me a tiny waffle maker. So it's a tumbler, but it doesn't fit in any of my cup holders. I wasn't even sure they still made these. Is it for kids? Is this for kids? Don't fall for the free gift. Find a bank that cares about what you really need. Cornerstone Bank. I'm Peter Bosch. I've been working with Gateway Building Systems for a little over 20 years now. I chose Gateway Building Systems to build my shop because I wanted a building that could both be used for my equipment and as a place for my family to hang out and do things. I would advise anybody that's thinking about working with Gateway to go in and talk to the guys there, tell them your plans and your future dreams and let them design something for you. Dwayne and Jennifer Ditterich started farming his family's land in west central Minnesota in 2007. In 2013, with row crop prices declining, they transitioned to beef. A few years later, they opened a small meat store on their farm and are now taking it to the next level. They've opened a grocery store. Katie Pinky has more. You're going to see someone from our family will be here every day and we'll get to know who you are and what you want. Dwayne, his wife, and sons have taken a big step, opening a grocery store in Vergas, Minnesota. The small lakes country town of 300 have been looking for someone to open a grocery store since the town's only one closed in 2016. Very excited about you. So last year, Ditterich decided to do it, incorporating some of the other aspects of his business. I decided that if somebody would buy the building and lease me space, that we would uh, put up the grocery store and then we'll move our meat 
into the store and our food truck that we have. So now we can do the catering out of a, a full commercial sized kitchen. So we can actually sell fresh meat also. Swipe, it's 1221. Losing the grocery store was a big blow for the town. So Mayor Julie Bruin is happy to see this happening. It was a real heartbreak for the community. I mean, a grocery store is so central to a community. The project was helped with COVID money from the West Central Initiative, as well as their local bank and other investors. The building also has other shops, a gym and apartments. We need to use our local people. We need to um, shop at our local stores. Otherwise, it's not going to be there when you want it. And, and the only way to do that is invest in it. Ditterich thinks this small family-owned store can compete with the larger stores in nearby towns by offering quality local products. Ditterich says he's a risk taker and urges other farmers not to be afraid to take a chance. Put your heart and soul into it, do a great job with it, give them a good product at a fair price, and you're going to succeed. In Vergas, Minnesota, this is Katie Pinky for Ag Week. Because Ditterich is busy with the store now, his beef production on the farm has changed. He sold his cow-calf operation to a friend, but is still feeding beef. When thinking of livestock in the upper Midwest, chances are goats aren't the first species to come to mind. Living in this region can make it difficult to get quality goat genetics, but that didn't stop Levis Farms from offering premium genetics to the region's goat industry. Now it's, you know, it went from 15 does and a buck to, well, we got over 100 goats here now. Brent Levis decided he wanted to raise high quality goats with premium genetics by incorporating an intensive embryo transfer program using both IVF and flushing. This allowed him to bring high quality genetics into his herd despite his location. We're in North Dakota, we're a long ways from where all the major guys are. You know, Oklahoma, Texas, Illinois, I mean, it's a long drive to get to some of these guys. And so they're not always willing to, you know, lease bucks that far away. He now has more than 55 donor does, 60 recipient does, as well as some bucks. But it didn't start out that way. I looked at my dad one day and I said, uh, you know, we're going out and buying these. Um, you, you care if I raise a couple? You know, at that time, my sister was then showing. Um, and I'm like, we can raise them and let's see what we can do with this. Let's have a little fun. Levis found his passion for goats during his time in 4-H. He now sells to local 4-H kids. He also consigns his show weathers and sales around the country. Levis believes goats have allowed him to make the most of his land. We live here in the Red River Valley. Everybody knows about the farm ground. There's not a lot of grass. So we run the goats right here in the yard, make a little hay here and there, but you know, they have such a small footprint as far as what we need for acreage. We can run a lot of them in just a little spot. Levis recently won Grand Champion Commercial Doe at the 2022 Summer Spotlight in Huron, South Dakota. Coming up on Ag Week TV, improving your crops with calcine. Every season has an end. After spending your whole life building something, it can be hard to move on to your next stage in life. But when that time comes, you deserve to have someone you trust guide you through the process. And by trusting us to pass on your legacy, it gives someone else the chance to create their own. Every auction has a story. Let us share yours. Farming is more than just work. It's your way of life. Protecting your family's legacy is our way of life. Through challenges and successes, we understand your family's insurance needs. With every turn of the wheel, for every investment, through every season, generation after generation, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has the storage, conditioning, and handling equipment to fit any size operation with a wide variety of options and accessories, including our patented Blockbuster Auger to help break up blockages over the center sump gate and a full line of mixed flow grain dryers with even heating, excellent efficiency, and expandable capacities. Protect your investment and market your grain. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with Superior Grain Equipment. It's 
Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. Could the region be in for more mild weather as it makes its way through August? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. As August rolls along, a fairly interesting weather pattern is shaping up that is really featured on the strength of the jet stream, which is not. It has gone fairly weak over North America, split into two parts. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But this much weaker jet stream, I mean, it's been a summer that's been northern plains, southern Canada, upper Midwest, uncharacteristically windy, uh, a lot of wind storms and just windy days and a combination of hot weather and cool weather going back and forth. Fairly volatile summer weather pattern. Now we're kind of sliding into something that's much softer. Not as much heat, not as much uh, cool weather either, not as much change. And it also won't be very rainy. But that trade-off comes with the absence of really hot weather. Let me show you that jet stream. It's split into two parts right now. We've got the primary polar jet, which is way up north, which if it had any strength to it, would probably pull a great deal of hot weather up north. But instead, it's, it's relatively weak. There's a southern branch of that jet that will occasionally have influences on the temperature pattern. The hot 90s and a stray 100 degree temperature will actually get narrower and narrower into the northern plains. Out west, this weather pattern of weak upper level winds will allow the usual hot weather in the desert southwest to expand a bit and actually push out even to the coast in some areas of the Pacific Northwest. Next couple of weeks look very hot. Places like Seattle and Portland, there'll be occasional excursions, incursions of that hot weather into Montana. But uh, over most of the areas east of the Rockies, the only truly hot areas will be the places that are typically hot. This is the hottest time of the year down in Texas and South Florida will be very warm through the week. A lot of this weather, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, it's going to be 70s and 80s. Uh, a lot of 80s in South Dakota, a lot of 70s in parts of North Dakota and Minnesota. Just really pretty comfortable weather for this week. As we go through the second week, not a lot of change, except I do think we'll finally start to see the uh, polar jet stream begin to curve southward in the Hudson Bay area, and that'll begin to start to see some cooler weather as we move toward the fall season. Now, what does this mean for precipitation? With the jet stream fairly weak, there's not likely to be very much. Scattered showers, thunder showers, mostly of the air mass variety all along the eastern seaboard. This is the southern monsoon. All that hot weather pulls moisture up. So the southern Rockies and even occasionally the deserts are prone to uh, heavy thunderstorms at times. That's this week. The second week of the forecast, not a lot of change, not a lot of rain out into the northern Great Plains. The monsoons may connect through the Midwest and into the Great Lakes with some slightly above average rainfall. But most of the northern plains and the western United States will be a little dry. But in the northern plains area, at least, it won't be terribly hot. Hi, Bill Kelsey here, Gehringhoff Territory Manager, covering northern Minnesota and the Dakotas. At Gehringhoff, we offer a full line of the best harvest headers and residue management system on the market. Contact me today to discuss your farm's needs. From there, I'll connect you with an authorized Gehringhoff dealer. Last year's drought really cut into yields for some growers. Couple that with high and rising fertilizer costs and that can lead to real problems for growers. But there is a solution. AquaYield products save you money because you use much less. If the average price of what you're going to use in the AquaYield products is anywhere from $12 to $15 per acre, you can compare that to standard fertilizers that would be up in that $50 to $60 per acre. AquaYield's efficiency comes through the use of nano-liquid technology. But we've had proof of where farmers can see a bushel increase. AquaYield is unique in that it can be deployed as a delivery vehicle into micro and macronutrients and other crop protection products a grower is already using. It protects them in the patented AquaYield nanoparticle. These tiny particles penetrate root and leaf tissue, improving absorption into the plant. 
Nanoliquid technology truly lets you use less and yield more. It's fun to sit down with the producers and go through the details of what nanotechnology is all about. It's going to be an interesting year in agriculture. We have already seen the markets trade to new crop highs and levels not seen in years. There is uncertainty around the 2022 growing season. Will drought impact production? How many acres will be switched? And will demand remain strong? Are you getting the information you need to make the right marketing decisions? With the changing market environment, maybe it's time to change how you approach your grain marketing. Let Martinson Ag Risk Management get you the news that matters and a marketing plan that suits your needs. Since the inception of Vatterstadt, the spirit of innovation has led the company. We push the limits, providing innovative and reliable seeding and tillage solutions that simplify everyday life for farmers. We continue to reimagine the capabilities and technology behind farm machinery, providing customers with a perfect emergence while maximizing their yields. We look forward to growing together. Soil health is crucial for a desirable crop. Many farmers and producers are constantly looking for products that help their soil and yield go the extra mile. And a product called Calcine does just that. I visited with a farmer in Davenport, North Dakota, who uses Calcine on his fields. Today I'm with Brad Kellerman, who farms in Davenport, North Dakota, and we are going to be talking about Calcine. So how has Calcine transformed your soils? The way I've used it so far, has been an in furrow application uh, with the planter to try and help drive some oxygen into the furrow uh, for better ger and more even germination. We apply it with the planter or with our starter fertilizer and um, it's just one pint per acre. So it mixes well, so it's no extra work to apply or no special trip. And what year did you start using calcine? I've only used it in furrow uh, on soybeans. This is actually my second year, and I believe it's the third on corn. And I haven't done the broadcast application yet, but I hope to get that applied this fall. And as you've been doing it the past couple of years, have you been happy with the results and the yield? Yeah, I definitely feel that it's a, a valuable part of, of, the, of the program. I've tried a lot of different products. I really like the properties that it displays and I'm gonna keep working with it to try and improve the overall soil health because if the soil health is not good, I don't think the crop is gonna be good either. And if you were talking to a producer that's kind of thinking about implementing calcine into their management plan, uh, what would you say to them? Well, I, w I guess I would have to recommend that you definitely have to try some. Part of the information that I got from the actual, the, the guy that makes the product, that designed it, designed it to extract minerals and soil properties, uh, much like a plant excretes enzymes and stuff to get minerals out of the soil. I, I've never really run across anything that's kind of displays those properties and that's a keen interest for me uh, to try and replicate that. So I, I don't believe there's anything on the market well, that I've seen like calcine that, um, that works in the soil the way it does. To learn more about how calcine works, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the number or email on your screen. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll visit a farm using their grain in their own distillery. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. The team at North Star Egg is committed to quality and committed to you. We're not just a full service dealer, we're farmers too, so we know you need the best machinery and services that'll keep you going all season long. We have the largest equipment inventory in the upper Midwest with a well-equipped parts and service department. So whether you need machinery tomorrow or parts today, stop in and experience what North Star Egg can offer on our website at northstar-egg.com or give us a call at 701-361-4790. Farming is more than just work. It's your way of life. Protecting your family's legacy is our way of life. Through challenges and successes, we understand your family's insurance needs. 
with every turn of the wheel, for every investment, through every season, generation after generation. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. It's summertime, and that means it's time for Farm Fest. Join us for more of what you love, August 2nd through the 4th. Farm Fest brings you more demonstrations, family entertainment, food vendors, and exhibits. Take in the Farm Fest forums and visit the seed plots, ride and drive demonstrations, and new networking lounge with live music and refreshments. See for yourself at Farm Fest, August 2nd through the 4th. For tickets, visit farmfest.com. Network, learn, grow, and experience more at Farm Fest. Attention farmers and farming communities, the herbicide Paraquat has been linked to Parkinson's disease. Paraquat, also known as Gramoxone, is still being used in the U.S. on corn, soy, and wheat crops and puts farm workers in danger. Producers across the country have filed lawsuits claiming that Paraquat caused their Parkinson's disease and that the manufacturer failed to warn about the chemical's risk of neurological damage. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with Parkinson's after direct or indirect exposure to Paraquat, call or visit SolbergLaw.com. Wisconsin may be known as the dairy state, but one farm is growing its own spirits. The Perlick family has been farming near Serona, Wisconsin since the 1920s. The farm is 2,000 acres of corn, wheat, soybeans, barley, sunflowers, and other crops. They opened the distillery in 2014 to add value to the grains they grow and to create quality distilled spirits. They currently make their flagship spirit, American Yeoman Vodka, and will be releasing an American single malt whiskey next summer. The Perlix grow everything that goes into their products. We control the process from the very start when it goes in the ground to the very end when we sell it. So, um, so that's unique. And it's, yeah, 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 everything that goes into the water is right from our well. The distillery is open to the public year round. They sell their spirits on site and in stores around the region. They also do a 20 acre sunflower maze in the fall and they make bird seed with the sunflowers. Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. A Princeton dairy farmer is named Farm Fest Woman Farmer of the Year. And the Summit Carbon Pipeline faces additional hurdles. We appreciate you watching Ag Week TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a great week.